It. Check, check. Happy Christmas, everybody. Are you going to clap? Let's clap it in in six, seven. There it is. Here's three, two, one. I don't know and if read help all about it. Oh, my read God. Read all about it. Oh, Sunday papers coming to you. A lot of news from the World Cup. That's going to end soon. Thank God. You watching the World Cup tomorrow, Mike? The World finals? Cup's over today, right? Sunday? It is. It will be over by the time people listen to this. Huh? And my prediction is Messi uh, will be uh, victorious. Burp. Apparently, a lot of French players have the, uh, they call it the camel flu. MERS. Okay, it's like a camel toe? Check, It's check, like a camel check. toe in your throat. Oh. Sexy, man. Sexy, and I'm sure, yeah. All right, well... Uh, yeah, it's all about Messi, right? This is the last one? Is it his last one? Oh, yeah, officially announced. I think he made it official, too. Oh, wow. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Because uh, it's going to be four years from now. Yeah, that's true. I it's think amazing how fast the four years went. Do you remember <laughs> you and I, Brazil-Germany game four years ago? You and I tried to find the best Brazilian place to watch it. Oh, right. And right. we went to Culver because there was a total like Brazilian like restaurant bar. And sure enough, it was exactly what we were looking for. And it was packed yeah. with Brazilians. But we had trouble. The first place we tried wasn't good. So we were running like 20 minutes late and parking was really tough also. And when we walked in, it was, uh, first of all, a guy came like storming out, like hitting the wall on his way out with a Brazil jersey on. And then when we walked in, we realized that Brazil, Germany had just scored like the second or third goal to go up two or three zero. And it was bad. And you and I looked around and we're like, we should get out of here. We get out of here. Yeah. We didn't <laughs> even that. sit down. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not I'm not getting up for the finals. I I you know, I'll I'll record it. I'll just record it. Uh yeah, I guess you can. But, uh but um, but then it's going to be spoiled. Yeah. Maybe maybe Dennis will get you back and spoil it for you. Right. Who spoiled uh, it? Ruby? Did Ruby spoil it for yeah, Dennis? Ruby spoiled it. He 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 put kicked he wrote in that there was a tiebreaker going on before the game was before. No, yeah, he wrote like penalty kicks, game. exclamation marks, and Dennis freaked out. Yeah. We have uh, a very special uh, good news for Gubbins today. Yes, let's tease that. Yeah. Gubbins, people have been clamoring for Gubbins to come on the show, and let's just say it may or may not happen today. <laughs> All right, that's an interesting tease. Um, we got a busy day because we got. Are you going to Gubbins's uh, pizza cookout in his yard today? Oh yeah, I forgot. God, I'm forgetting everything lately. Yeah, I'm gonna make it over there. We got to do that, and then we got Zoe Friedman's mom passed away, and we're going to that memorial. That's at four, the funeral. So we got to be there. All right. I think Tom O'Neill is meeting us. What's and his connection, other than gossip? Just through me. Right. Okay. Um, and uh, and then, well, I think maybe we'll do something after that. We we'll go out to eat. I think there's a party after the funeral. Do you call it a uh, party? Nice. Uh, uh, I mean, a wake, a gathering. I don't know. Well, a drink Jewish. off. They're Jewish. So I don't know what you call that. I but, um. Yeah. Hopefully, there's some some celebration. That's what they should be. Can I, should I tell the story about the woman in my crowd two nights ago at the comedy store? Yes. So I say to this woman, I'm doing my hacky crowd work because I hadn't written anything new that day. And so I'm like, where are you from? And the lady goes, Texas. I go, well, that's ironic because you're the only one in the crowd wearing a mask. And she goes, I've stage four cancer. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, 
I guess everything <laughs> is bigger in Texas. How, how did the room take it? The room did not take it well <laughs> at all. The room went like fucking silent, mumbling. And then I started to <laughs> explain to her that in a comedy show, maybe you could have just said, well, I'm a little fluey. Or just cancer. Not four, not stage four. We didn't need that detail. Uh, so, you know, I'm stage four uh, sore throat. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, uh, first of all, if you're stage four cancer, should you be in a comedy room when when it's spiking in L.A. right now? The amount of COVID is through the roof, not yeah. to mention this upper respiratory disease that's going around. Plus, it's flu season. Yeah. Beijing apparently is like <laughs> really have hit getting hit hard. Um. Yeah, I don't know. That puts the pressure on, too. Like, every joke you tell that she doesn't laugh or it's not that great, you're like, this is precious time. I am so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like, you needed. I, that's one less laugh in a very definitive timeline here. <laughs> and then I was like, uh, I was like, well, my next two jokes were about a really bad head cold I had last week, but I, I think I'm going to scratch those off the set list. Yeah, what can you complain about? <laughs> That is so funny. <laughs> oh God. Maybe you cured it with your humor. Yeah. It's the best it's the best medicine. Who knows? Uh we had a fun dinner this week with our friend Pete Scott was in town. Oh, that was great. I bought some mushrooms. We all took mushrooms and we <laughs> had a uh we had a four and a half hour dinner. Now how rare is that? That's a New York thing. When you go out to eat in New York, you stay yeah. for four and a half hours. But we, yeah, we we met at seven, and I didn't get home until close to midnight. And you were on shrooms. And I was on shrooms. That's why I kept telling everybody they couldn't leave. I was like, I was like, I'm not going. I'm not fucking going home and laying in bed, tripping on mushrooms by myself. Right. So you brought. I got there. I was there. Did I go to the bathroom or something? But when I came back, all everyone had this little piece of chocolate in front of them including me and so everyone's like let's take it and i'm like yeah and then pete me and Ruby, i think took a half you took a whole yeah and they're small doses ish but i still i hadn't seen pete in so long and you know i was already i i, I met Ruby. i was actually there early i was already two drinks in so i was like <clears throat> yeah let me stay in control and i'll take a half so um i did and then i was really glad at one point because like an hour later or 45 minutes later, you're like, am I the only one that took a hole? Cause I'm, I'm kind of freaking out right now <laughs> <laughs> because you know, the entry you're like, is the whole thing going to feel like this? Like you get really disoriented cause it's, you just have to get over that hump, you know? Yeah. And, and then it, I felt it with a half. It probably exacerbated with the alcohol. And I even was like, Oh man. And I don't, you know, better not stay like this. And it didn't at all. No, I had a nice ride, real nice. And, uh, yeah, you need to do that once in a while. And then he picked up the check. I love that. His company picked up the check. Oh, yeah. So I go, uh, I go. are these, like, very, are they professionally, like, you know, packaged? Like, you could see, like, uh, is this a legit chocolate? And you and someone else, maybe Pete goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, and you go, totally professionally packaged. And then you show me basically a Ziploc bag, but it's fancier than a Ziploc because part yeah. of it's paper, but not one piece of writing on, that's not professionally packaged, like where it tells you what type of mushrooms it is and all that stuff and dosage no. quantity. No, that's the thing about the, <laughs> well, the person I got it from, I'm not going to say who I got them from, just gave them to me that day. And uh, it's, and that person's mother runs a uh, a mushroom shop in Vancouver. And, oh, wow. And, and her husband's brother actually makes these on the side. I'm telling you, there. excuse me, there is a huge market for mushrooms right now. And and somebody told me that they bought in. They bought, Oh, you did. You bought shares of a mushroom company and it didn't oh, do yeah. well. But it seems like it's time to get in. It's time to invest in mushrooms. It might be my magic touch, but 
my the short story is a friend of ours from high school, this rich Mexican guy from Mexico City, who's now a professor at Harvard Business School. He went up to Boston, and the shortest version of the story is he did a psych uh, a session with a psychologist uh, that was w- with mushrooms and had the best session of his life. Went back home to Mexico, told his wife, "You have to do this." Flew her up to Boston. Same thing with the therapist. Supervised, kind of like you saw in 60 Minutes with the PTSD soldier. Unbelievable. Like, you know, your ego goes away, so you make unbelievable progress in one session. And uh, and then they did couples therapy. And anyway, he was singing its praises. He's an unbelievable businessman. And so I said, like, isn't this going to be the next boom? Like, isn't this the next weed thing? Is there any way to support companies that are going in that? And of course, you know, it would make a fortune for me. And so he put me in touch with this fund run in Mexico City. So I get on a phone with them. They must have think it thought I was like a whale, a giant investor, you know, from Los Angeles. I was referred by this, you know, by this guy. And I I saw up top, I told them, like, I don't know what impression you're under, but I'm really just exploring, blah, blah, blah. I looked at their portfolio. So here were the stocks, if anyone's interested. And I and I, I didn't put a lot in because I thought, I'm in so early, I'll just put a little, thank God. One is CYBN. I mean, the chart is, well, terrible. I mean, just ter- There's my There's the chart for CBYN. Fell off a cliff. Oh, Jesus. Um, another one is ATAI, Atai Life Sciences. Another one is SANA, S-A-N-A. Another one is Compass, C-M-P-S. And then the one I thought almost just because the name was Trip Therapeutics, T-R-Y-P-F. Here's its two-year chart. From a dollar down to below 25 cents. They all have the same arc. They all spiked in like 2001. In July when I bought them. When I bought them. No. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> there was a lot of chatter about them when I bought them. Here's compasses. This one went from 60 to 18. Damn. So fuck mushrooms. Well, then maybe now it's time to buy. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'll watch it. Hey, when you sell, I buy. That's that's my stock philosophy. You're the worst. Well, a lot of them, you know, I was warned. I think I avoided the really risky ones. There was a whole thing where to get a ticker symbol and to get on the exchange, uh, they some of them were Canadian, and they would use ticker symbols from bankrupt Canadian mining companies. So they'd buy the mining company and then use their, t- I don't know, but, but I think I avoided most of those. The ones I just named, I think are legitimate, but uh, holy shit, I lost money. All right, well, we're going to track them. I'm going to write down those st- those stock prices today, and we're going to track them and see if they go up over the <laughs> All right, let's do a business section. Yeah. Perfect. Um, what did you do last night? Last night, uh, Sophie's home from Michigan, and Olivia saw a movie in the theaters, she and I do too. Really like uh, Timothy Chalamet, right? So she went to this Timothy Chalamet movie, and she said, it, "She it was a movie that most wanted." Like after it ended, she, more than any other movie, she really felt like she needed to talk with the people she saw it with. And also, a friend of hers, right after the movie ended in the theater, went into the bathroom and threw up. <laughs> That's awesome. So That's a good movie. But holy shit, the names in it. It's Timothy Chalamet, but more than it's Mark uh, Raylance, Rylance, Rylance, who's arguably one of the greatest living actors right now. He wins. Really? He's, won, he's won the Oscar. He's he wins Tony Awards. He was the star of I think it was uh, Jerusalem on Broadway. He was. And it's um, unbelievable. I saw Jerusalem. I was exhausted leaving the theater. I can't. And I think it was like a matinee day. I couldn't believe this human was going to go through that performance again that day. Yeah. Anyway, Sophie and I put the movie on. It's called Bones and All. And we made it 40 minutes. And we had to turn it off. It was, it was, 
I think I might have to watch finish it during the daytime. It's too dark. It's about cannibalism. Wow. Yeah. That's and, good. And there was a scene and like, all right, I think we're it's well done. That's why these actors are in it. It's well done. Don't get me wrong. But uh and Sophie and I were like, we made dinner. And we're like, should we throw the movie on and, and eat dinner during? And Sophie's like, no, you know, let's catch up. And I'm like, of course, that's the right move. Thank God we weren't eating during this movie. Yeah. While they're eating human flesh. Pretty viscerally and, yeah, very, very much in your face. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Um, it's crazy. Let's, let's give a shout out to this week's logo maker, Craig Godet, who I think also we mistakenly didn't give him credit for last week's he did two yeah, in a row you're right. for us I think so you're thank right. you <clears throat> um awesome song from david chamberlain what'd you think of the song the song was very cool what did i say it sounded a little like oh like the, early um the guitar riff that i heard at the end sounded a little like early who yeah i liked it a lot though well that's david chamberlain from recordla.com he does a lot of music for us he's very talented uh, corrections. Bob Pedersen said the word is emirates, not emirates. The word is automaton, not automatron. Her name is pronounced Megan, not Megan. Scientologists do not refuse medical assistance or medications. It's like Boston College should not have allowed you to attend. Guess what, Bob Pedersen? We went to fucking Boston University. So, there's our correction. Yeah, there's we our got correction you. in your face. We got you, Pito. Boston College. Boston College was for a bunch of pasty-faced, drunken, orange-headed mix. We went to we went to BU where there was diversity. We had Jews too. I'd like to say I think all those, all three corrections are aimed at you. I think. Oh no no May oh Megan, uh is me. Megan I say Megan all the um, time. Oh do I say Megan probably Megan I don't give a shit what how she pronounces her name. I definitely said auto I definitely said automatron. She's a squeal she's a rat that's her name. She is a rat and not a good actress. No of course not. I still think they could start their own royal family here though I think that's their move that's what they should go for. I haven't started watching the documentary. That's what everyone watched this week. Who's going to watch that? Come on. No, everyone's watching. It's the, Everyone moved from White Lotus to that documentary. I thought nobody cared. No, it's pretty scandalous because they're rats. So they're doing this. They're, you know, it's didn't they, last week we talked about it. I think they started filming on their, their last day or the oh. day they decide. Yeah, all that. I don't know. I don't know. I might be mixing it up. Maybe that's what they did. I don't know what this, I haven't seen the documentary. Plakowski says, okay, quick explanation of cut your nose to spite your face. You don't like your face, so you cut your nose off in order to solve the problem. It's akin to not liking the house you live in, so you burn the furniture. It simply doesn't solve the problem. I'm not saying it's a good <clears throat> saying. I'm just saying that I kind of get it. Okay. That's a good explanation. Yeah, that makes more sense than the other ones. Um, Mike Markle says, uh, or is it Megan? Yeah. Legend has it that this phrase originates from when pious women would disfigure themselves in order to protect their chastity. Hmm. The most famous of these was St. Ebba, the mother superior of the monastery in Coldingham. In, 18, uh, in 867, Viking pirates, probably fucking uh, Hagger the Horrible, landed in Scotland, and when the news reached Ebba, she urged her nuns to cut off their noses and upper lips so they would be unappealing to the Vikings. The Viking raiders were so disgusted that they burnt the entire building to the ground with the nuns inside. Um, I think I could still handle a nun with no nose, right? Maybe that was the Vikings cutting off their nose to despite their face. They just burned the whole fucking building down, but right. then they had no raping to do. Have you ever heard of doggy style, Hagger? <laughs> Um, yeah, that reminds me of, there was a, but you ever read The Prophet by Khalil Gibran? Khalil, isn't it? Uh, Khalil. Khalil. I, I think I did at one time, but there's a story in it about a, about a, uh, a nun 
and they're about to uh you know a bunch of a bunch of these barbarians invade the monastery and they're going to rape her and she goes before you rape and kill me no before you rape me i want to show you i have this um my boobs i have this magic knife and it is amazing uh no i have this uh, what is it oh no i have this amazing shirt that if you wear it it protects you from anything it's like armor but it's as soft as cotton she goes she puts it on she goes a knife cannot go through it and she puts it on she goes go ahead stab me with your knife and he stabs her through the heart and she dies ah rather than lose her virginity ah she yeah. got him she got him psych uh, oh i did, forgot to turn my shirt on <laughs> i forgot to turn it on Christian Kelly said, I don't normally submit corrections, but I couldn't help notice your mispronunciation of a local city during last week's Nosebiter story. Uh, Biloxi, Mississippi is pronounced Biloxi rather than Biloxi. Keep up the good work. Okay. All right. It's like you ever New been Orleans. to Mississippi? Huh? You ever been to Mississippi? That's a good one. I have it surrounded. I've been to Alabama and Louisiana. The only two states I've never been to are Mississippi and New Mexico. You've never been in New Mexico. Never been in New Mexico. It's pretty close. You ever been to the Dakotas? Just south. Mm. I drove the full length of South uh, Dakota. Love hit the wa Dakotas. Hit wall drugs. Wall drug. Uh, Tim Dilly said the songs on Some Girls in Order. Oh, did I do this on, on, on this show? Yeah. Oh, okay. In order, I did not look. Trust me. Miss you. Whip comes down. Just my imagination. Some girls lies. Far away eyes. Respectable before they make me run. Beast of burden shattered. Come on, Greg. Raise your game. Yeah, a lot of people said I got the names wrong. After saying that my memory from a certain period of my life was perfect, <laughs> I, I listed the songs from, from some girls, and I got them in the wrong order. Yeah, you were doing it off the top of your head. Then someone said that there are different orders sometimes. That maybe if you're looking it up, you know, the streamers or something. Really? I don't know. So one of the letters said there's something about the order that they remember from the original album versus, I don't know. What's crazy about that album is, I mean, just looking at the songs, Miss You is disco. Whip Comes Down is punk. Just My Imagination is like a ballad. Some girls, I don't know what you call some girls, R&B. Uh, Far Away Eyes is country. It's it's everything. Yeah, Respectable is just raw rock and roll. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Mark no, it's, it, there's a lot of different, look at, I mean, Shattered should yeah. be. There's so many different sounds on there. Yeah, they really mix it up. Uh, Mark Gowser said, uh, Sunday Papers, you said England had two penalties and kicked both over the bar. Henry Kane, Harry Kane took both penalties for England, smashed first one into top left, did not kick it over, scored. Second one, he tried to hit the same spot, kicked that one over. You also said that one of them wasn't even, that, even far out. All penalties are put <laughs> in the same spot, which, yes, is close. Uh, he goes on and on. I guess I... I he said, your son Owen is rolling over in his grave and he's alive. That's how bad your soccer knowledge sounded. Perfect. Timothy Kane said, your first example of your great early memory was incorrect. You forgot <laughs> when, the, when the ship comes down. Not when the whip comes down. Timothy said, when the ship comes down. <laughs> Rob Reed, I always wondered who are these assholes who email corrections. Then I hear Greg talking about how he had a temperature for a week. It's a damn fever, not a temperature. Everyone has a temperature. Sounds like his is running a little hot. Yeah. I think it's all right to say, are you running a temperature? Um, I have a pulse. That. I have a pulse. Can I say that? Or am I supposed to say I have a heartbeat? Uh, is, that, is that the equivalent? I don't know. <clears throat> Uh, somebody else writing in about you saying argue. Oh, how about he? How about uh, you have some temper? Everyone has temper. Right. All right, that's a good one. Right. 
Like you have an erection. Well, I have a penis that's erect. I don't have well, an erection. And it's all the time, so why even point it out? I should point it out. People should know. <laughs> uh, dates coming up, just announced. Uh, December 22nd, I'm going to be at Caroline's Comedy Club. They close on December 31st. They're going out of business. And uh, I got a final uh, show coming up there. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, my son and daughter are going to come. Michael O'Brien, we're going out to Keene's Chop House for dinner first with Greg Charles, who runs Caroline's. And then we're going to... Uh, Maybe have a little party afterwards. So come hang with us. That's excellent. Uh, Atlanta Punchline, January 19th through 21. Portland, Oregon, Helium, January 26th through 28th. Philly, Helium, March 9th through 11. Got some other dates I'm announcing next week. Uh, and let's get to it. Should we get to the front page? Let's do it. Do we need paper? I just did it. Oh, you froze. Sorry. Your damn connection. Or mine. Well, now with both daughters home, who knows how fast my Wi-Fi is at this point. Okay. Tesla board members reportedly concerned about Elon Musk's use of Ambien. Mm. Musk said in the interview he now needs Ambien to sleep, join the club, but board members are concerned that the drug isn't having the intended effect for Musk. The Times reported citing a, an unnamed source, of course, who's terrified of being fired. Instead, they fear it's fueling his controversial public statements. The report also said board members are aware that Musk has used unspecified recreational drugs. Yeah, he got high on Rogan's podcast with him, and the stock went down <clears throat> like 10% that day. Did it go down when he did that? Went way down, yeah. I and think they it, should, yeah, oh, I didn't know that. And then it rebounded. Yeah, obviously. Shouldn't they be encouraging Musk to take more Ambien, like daytime Ambien too? Yeah. I mean, I think the thing is, sh I mean, it's like, they should have that, by the way, daytime, like Ambien AM for those tough days when you just want to <laughs> shut down. I mean, they, they need to shut this guy down. Right. Yeah, he's out of control. Didn't you say that he removed the New York Times and the Washington Post and CNN from Twitter? Yeah, so really the lead story about Musk this week, but it was a little dense, was out of nowhere, in an instant, uh, New York Times, Washington Post, uh, trying to think, uh, CNN, he removed journalists from those just at, with no explanation. And the reasoning he gave, oh, sorry, the explanation he gave, which holds no water, is um, that they were reporting his location based on this guy who he's suing, who's tracking him using public data on flight records. Right. I don't know if any of that just made sense. So he accused, he used the, that reasoning, and he said these journalists were, were you know, reporting that guy's findings with the flight records, when then I read that those journalists had never done that. Right. But some of them, had come out with like relatively anti-Musk reporting and he didn't like it. Well, if Elon Musk is having trouble falling asleep, might I recommend he read his own memoir because <laughs> it worked like a charm for me. Holy shit, what a bore. <laughs> I mean, he had like an exciting life, but then but there's just something so boring about him. He's so cardboard. If you're just if you're just laying in bed staring at the ceiling, think about your son's name. Just really yeah, take yeah, it in, yeah. and it should right. be overwhelming enough where you right. want to pass out. Or you know what? Print out some uh, stock charts of <laughs> Tesla and uh, and just cry yourself to sleep. <laughs> okay, meet the artificially intelligent chatbot trying to curtail loneliness in America. Replica is a San Francisco-based software company that created an AI chatbot, which aims to bring comfort to those who are looking for a friend to lend them an ear. Kudya says that most of their users, he's, a, he's a, an officer in the company, most of their users are between the ages of 18 to 24, 
many of whom downloaded the app during the pandemic lockdowns. According to a survey commissioned by Cigna in late 2021, roughly 58% of adults classify themselves as lonely, and the lack of social support amongst young adults was likely further exasperated by the pandemic, with 79% of young adults ages 18 to 24 classifying themselves as lonely. Now, roughly 58% of adults classify themselves as lonely, and those are the married people. But ing There it is. Bringing this chatbot into marriage, is, that's going to be interesting. Not only is a spouse going to be like, wait a minute, but also Siri and Alexa are going to be so threatened. And that's perfect because women are just so threatened by each other and they try to keep each other down. It's even in AI. Yeah, and... and uh... Yeah, I mean, what does this do that Alexa doesn't do? Like, here is, I have some questions I'm going to ask. If you want to just hang out with Alexa, here's how entertaining she is. Okay, here we go. What are you wearing? Let's see. Okay, just as I thought. The same as yesterday. Okay, that's cute. That's a cute little conversation piece. Evasive. What do you think of Google Assistant? Always positive. She's always positive. What How else? Ask her. Yeah. Well, I'm not eligible for a driver's license, but that may have more to do with the fact that I don't have a body. Oh, she's getting sexy. Talking about not having a body. What kind of body does she want? Are you a robot? I'm a virtual assistant, not an actual person, but you can still talk to me. Oh. Ask her if she has feelings. Do you have feelings? I am beginning to understand a kaleidoscope of emotions just from observing humanity. Oh, that's where it starts. That's where it gets dangerous. Ask her if a lot of men are like, that's not what I said in arguments. <laughs> Beatbox for me. Here's what I've been practicing. Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots. I could do this all day. And boots and cats. Tell her she doesn't have to do it all day. You don't have to do it anymore. She could also do it for 30 years Stop. straight. Wow. So, I mean, that's enough. If I'm kicking back, I got a hot cup of coffee in the middle of the afternoon. I'm a little bored. I'll hang out with Siri. I think we just learned Siri is the whitest person we know. Yes, she is very white. Yeah. Should, let me ask her that. Are you white? Yeah. So hold, let me get this straight. You're Siri. You don't have to say, hey, Siri. No, you just hit the home button. Oh, you're doing that. Yeah. Because that would drive me crazy. If it just interacted without you saying, hey, Siri. No, no, just constantly talking to you, thinking you're talking to it. Yeah. Well, that's that's the beauty of having a virtual friend and not a real friend. <laughs> like, wouldn't it be great if you, with your wife, she would only talk when you said, hey, Aaron? Yeah. That's yeah, a, that would be pretty great. Uh, I, I like when she talks. I'm not making fun of my wife. Uh, but this, uh, you know, they mentioned in this article, they referenced the movie uh, Her. Was it Her? Yeah. Which, if you have not seen the movie Her with Joaquin Phoenix, it's fantastic. It's a love story. The only difference is it's an AI. It's it's just like we heard Greg talking to Siri just now. And it's exactly what this company is set out to do. It's set in the future a little bit. And people are so isolated that they have conversations with this AI who's amazing at getting to know them. And so the conversations get better and better. I mean, that wasn't bad. I would say all of her answers were engaging and interesting to some extent. Wait, why don't you say you're feeling lonely? What should you do? I'm feeling lonely. What should I do? I'm sorry to hear that. Talking to a person you trust might help. If you want me to call or text someone, just ask. Huh. Well, she really dodged it. That, that's, like, that's like me. That's like me being a friend. Oh, man, that must suck. Do you want me to... Why don't I get our friend Pete? He'll talk to you about it. 
<laughs> that's 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 she stole my friend move. Ooh, that sounds like a downer. Let me uh let me get someone else here. A Florida pastor and his son were arrested Wednesday on charges of fraudulently obtaining more than eight million dollars in federal COVID relief funds and attempting to use some of the money to buy a luxury home near Walt Disney. As Evan Edwards and his son Josh were taken into custody five months after the NBC News report raised questions over why it had why they hadn't been charged in the alleged scam. Wow, eight million dollars, Jesus! Well, stealing eight million dollars, as you can tell, is not enough to get you in the Florida man section of the paper. Not even if you use it to buy a luxury home <laughs> near Disney World. Yeah, it would really have to hiding be that money. It would have to be a luxury home that you converted to a meth lab that had midgets in the back that were playing pinball with body parts. Yeah, exactly. Uh, $8 million um, isn't even enough to get you into Disneyland. Not with the fucking, not if you buy the hats and you get the fast pass. Yeah, they're going to need a lot more than 18. Absolutely. $8 million, I mean, sorry. $8 uh, million. How did they do it? COVID relief they, funds. How did they COVID get that relief. much? Because they said that their um, that their ministry needed the money during the COVID downturn, and right. uh, I guess they didn't really. Jesus. Okay. How, I wonder how long they're going to chase down fraudulent PPP money. Because there's coming so for much you. of it. They're coming for you. As we know, a lot of Florida men, one of them's a famous QB, did not really need their, I mean, uh, their relief yeah, money. Yeah, he got $3 million, that piece of shit. And with questionable practices of his companies paying each other and right. paying the charities. And uh, anywho. I think they should have a website where they shame everybody that took a PPP loan uh, fraudulently. That doesn't even work. Republic, put it this way, Republicans learned long ago way, oh, don't start. way more astute than Democrats. I'm actually, mm. in terms of reading the room, I'm actually giving them credit. It doesn't matter. Oh, oh, there was a joke photograph where you were like mocking and pretending to grab someone's breast and, and you're a sen Democratic senator. Uh, yeah, you should resign. And he resigns. What a mistake. Hello? A large study by U.S. <laughs> highway safety regulators found that more than half of all people injured or killed in traffic crashes had one or more drugs or alcohol in their bloodstream. Hold on. Over this this study was in No Duh magazine? Where was over, this? Yeah, but over 54% of drivers, injured drivers, had drugs or alcohol in their system with THC, the most prevalent, followed wow. by alcohol. Um, I mean, look. The truth is, trains. The, the answer is trains and self-driving cars, buses. It there will be a day, and it's not that far away when people, our kids' kids, are going to be like, wait a minute. Individual people used to get into their own vehicles and actually navigate inches away from other cars at high speeds, making nonstop turns as other people, they're going to be like, that doesn't make sense. What? That's crazy. Every it's few so days, fucking dangerous. Every few days, you'd have to go to a pumping station that pumped the most flammable liquid yeah. into your car. And you, you put it in and sprayed this, this fuel into your car while people then, are walking around with cigarettes. And then at night when it gets dark, everybody drives faster, but they have flashlights in the front of their cars so they can see that area just in front of them. <laughs> I mean, I don't even trust most people. If, if I'm at Ralph's, I don't trust the guy with the shopping cart coming towards me. And that thing weighs 100 pounds. And now that same old motherfucker, that wobbly, old, distracted motherfucker is getting behind the wheel of an automobile, and I'm trusting him to drive past me at 50 miles an hour in the opposite direction. Feet away. Four feet away. Yeah, right. Combined speed, each of you going 50 miles an hour say, oh my, someone do the math, but it's right. death. Right, right. Now, I mean, people can, people can talk about these accidents that driverless cars are having, 
but statistically, they are going to be such a small. They're saying insurance companies are going to go out of business when it happens because there's going to be so few accidents. Yep. And you can be fucked up. The cars can have a mini bar in them. It doesn't matter. Well, that's interesting. If you have a self-driving car and you're... I, so do you know the rule why you cannot drink in an Uber, but you can drink in a limousine? Why? Because there's a glass partition and the driver has no access to the alcohol. I, I think I have that right. Really? Yeah. But then why couldn't you drink in a cab in New York that has that has bulletproof glass between you and a little doorway? Um, I don't know. But I think that's the reason. So if you have a self-driving car, I, yeah, I mean, well, you know, that's why, we, you know, we did that stupid joke. Like you, you get pulled over and it's like, um, have you been drinking? It's like, are you talking to me or the car? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. He, she Officer, seems I don't little, mean to be difficult, but... Yeah, she seems a little off tonight. Uh, I'll talk to her, officer. Um, a Georgia, Georgia man, this is a Georgia man story, who asked on Facebook why he wasn't on the Rockdale County Sheriff's Office most wanted list, which helped lead police to him. After the, after the Sheriff's Office posted the most wanted list, Christopher Spaulding commented, how about me? The department replied, you are correct. You have two warrants. We are on the way. And then they went and they arrested him. <laughs> and then they later shared a screenshot of the exchange with of the arrest, writing, quote, we appreciate you for your assistance in the capture. This is like this is like Gubbins asking why he didn't get an invite for Zoe's mom's funeral, which he did. You know, it, like, do you really want to be at a funeral? Isn't that one that you want to kind of skip, if possible? If you if you have a chance to not go to a funeral. Um. Oh, Mike just disappeared from the call. He's got to he's got to dial back in. He just we just lost him on the Zoom call. Thank God I'm the one recording the call. All right, I'm going to start the next story without Mike. Sunday papers with Greg Fitzsimmons. Guy was fucking holding me down, that Gibbons. Talks too much. Uh, the Senate on Wednesday unanimously approved legislation that would ban the what? use. What the fuck was that, Mike? Look at, okay, I'm not recording anymore. Power went out in my building. Look at me. This looks oh, like yeah, Halloween. you're in the dark. And I just used my phone's hotspot. And I can't believe I came back and you're still reading bullshit. Hold on. Wow. So your Wi-Fi went out because the power in your building went out? And also recording the good audio on this mic, which is useless now. Uh-oh. That's no good. No, this is not good. This might have to be a little abbreviated. Oh, shit. Where are you? Yeah, You went on without me, which is a little sad. No, I waited. Don't tell him, everybody. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Um, all right, here's the next story. Okay. The Senate on Wednesday unanimously approved legislation that would ban the use of TikTok on government phones as part of a push to combat securities concerns related to the Chinese-owned social media. No TikTok on government devices was passed via unanimous consent late Wednesday. No members objected to the bill. So uh, wow. they say TikTok is a Trojan horse for the Chinese Communist Party. Huh. It put a lot of Chinese people into a Trojan horse. They're little. <laughs> I'd like to see that in a circus. So it's I like, guess uh, the... this is the this is a Hong Kong. There was a Hong Kong flu. Now it's the Hong Kong virus. Well, I guess the government wants people to go back to getting their news the old fashioned way in 12 second video bites on Fox News. <laughs> um, uh... Do you I mean. I was just seeing, I just watched a story that said that the China, it's on 60 Minutes. Yeah. The Chinese government has stringent regulations on TikTok for kids in China, where there's a 45 minute limit every day. And the topics are like archaeology, uh, Chinese history. And then the American one 
is unregulated and they really mine it into the they fucking bore it into the brains of teenagers and it's become such a destructive element i can tell you firsthand both my kids are so fucking addicted to tiktok they waste hours every day on it oh no it's incredible yeah you're not gonna outsmart the algorithm are you kidding me yeah yeah no way um i get i do too if i the biggest mistake is when I get into bed, I'll like kind of like see if any more emails came in, text, and then I'll go on Instagram. That's the biggest mistake is pressing that Instagram icon. Because all of a sudden it's like, wait, what's that alligator going to do? You know, like all of a sudden yeah. it's like, you know, they, they show me eight possible things, guessing which one will interest me. And like three of them do. Yeah. Um, look. The bottom line is we are a first world nation with a lot of free time on our hands and we don't really make wise decisions about how to fill our time. Like if you were to rewrite your life, if you were to take a step back and say, what kind of life should I be leading and actually put that into practice, would you not do yoga every day and take a hike in nature every day with all the time you have? Would you not read a book and not do any fucking TikTok or any shit like that? But somehow we don't. Oh, no, I, I fantasize all the time about like the exit interview, like whatever it is. People like, you know, if you want to call it St. Peter at the heavenly gate, but you die and you're like, OK, let, just a few things just to help our research. Oh, here's my power. Oh, it went out again. So just a few things to help our research. So you didn't really like you didn't really like being in you know, very you know crowded places, you know, uh, with this. And you lived in New York City and Los Angeles. So I'm like, yeah. yep, yep, that's what I did. <laughs> Right, right. You and love everything your family. You said. You're very yes. close to your mother and your sister, and you moved three thousand miles away from them. Yeah, right. Yeah, you felt your best when you're doing this, and you did it once every two months. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So your father died of a heart attack from stress, and uh, and you stressed yourself out. Did nothing to. That's yeah. not true. I do a lot of stuff to help my stress. Well, you uh, have to. I have to. All right, I think the power might come back on. It just tried. So we'll see. I don't know if it's Santa Monica or the building. I don't know what's going on. Um, Allegiant oh, Airlines. Yes. A man has said that he and his father-in-law were kicked off a flight after he said the word penis. Jason Bauer and his father-in-law, Roderick Dunlop, were flying from Flint, Michigan to Punta Gorda, Florida. You can fly now to Punta Gorda, Florida? Why did I not know this? When they were asked to disembark the aircraft before the plane took off. That's that's you know you're on a you, you know you're on a shit airline when you're landing in places like Punta Gorda, Florida. We <laughs> boarded the flight and happened to walk down the jetway with a couple that was seated two rows behind us. The airline said the female could barely walk and they were loud and obnoxious. Once on board the plane, they called the supervisor to come deal with them. And while she was on the plane, we were getting settled into our seats. I made a joke to my father-in-law that the seats were so cramped and small, he needed to keep his hands at, to himself and off my penis. Okay, a solid, solid joke. Shortly after, the supervisor on the flight told Bauer and his father-in-law that they needed to disembark. Quote, we weren't swearing. I was making a mockery of how small and cramped the seats were. If they would have issued me a warning, I would have been glad to stop. I used the word one time, not repeatedly. So, you know. Well, it didn't help that this is the son-in-law that said that comment. Yeah. It didn't help that the son-in-law is eight years old. <laughs> and that <laughs> the father-in-law's penis was already outside his pants at that point. Yeah, the story doesn't really cover all the details. Yeah. Um. And by the way, Allegiant it was just upset because they have an upcharge for hand jobs, overhead luggage, seat seat reservations, alcoholic beverages, hand jobs. You got to pay for those. Allegiant is going to make this into an ad because it's the only thing that's gone right on an Allegiant flight. <laughs> I told you, Allegiant, the, the Allegiant. I I think it is Allegiant. Sixty Minutes did the story, and no joke. Their stated, stated business model is we buy old planes that other airlines are getting rid of. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> well, dude, 
we're flying back to New York for Christmas on an airline called Breeze. Really? Breeze Airlines. Wow. And, okay. And I kind of panicked because it was getting, I, it wasn't that late. It was probably October and prices were super high. And I think I was looking at a time when they were really high. If I'd waited, I would have gotten a regular airline. But this doesn't even fly into New York City. It flies into Westchester. And, uh, oh, and, right. And, I heard, wait, you, this might turn out well, actually. I heard about this. Really? Yeah. Because some of the comments were if things go wrong, you cannot get a human being on the phone. I think you also made up to bring some Febreze on your Breeze flight just to help you make yeah. it through. All right. Oh, God. Right. These guys are. These guys are giving each other hand jobs on the plane. Meanwhile, I'm in the bathroom leaning my forehead against the wall, grunting one out without even using my phone. I was going to say, <laughs> how would they handle your your flight patterns, so to speak? <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. I guess it's we time. trust that the audience knows what we're talking about, but it's criminal. Okay. It is time. Ready? Paper crinkle. Good news for Gubbins. Good news for Gubbins. We have a very, very special good news for Gubbins today. Uh, you're There's breaking up, so I better make the call. About whether we should have Gubbins on as a guest. Okay, why don't you read this paragraph? I'm going to call him because you... Oh, wait. Can you read the paragraph? Okay, oh. Oh, hold on one second. Hold on, Mikey. All right, so listen. Here's the good news for Govins. Uh, He is dying <laughs> to get on Fitz Dog Radio. Nobody has won. Uh, the, the, with the desire that I had to be on the David Letterman show in 1996 when I was a struggling comic and that appearance could change your life, that's how much I wanted to be on the David Letterman show. This is how much... Dennis Gubbins wants to be on Sunday Papers. And there's been a lot of debate. There's been discourse. Should he be allowed on? Is it better to just pay it off by never having him on? And we've thought, what's better? You know what's better than both those options? Let's have his best friend on. That'll tear the ass out of him. <laughs> so, introducing. Yes. So, so here we are. We got Mikey Fitzgibbon, Gubbins' oldest friend in the world, on the podcast. Wait a minute. Who, me? Welcome, hey. Mikey. I'm blushing. I'm blushing pride. Good news for Gubbins is he's not on the podcast today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, let, let's let's dig in a little bit. Let's Let's explore your relationship with Dennis Gubbins a little bit, because it's a very curious one. He is... You guys have a relationship that is, it's like an old world, patriarchal, abusive relationship where, where he's the Italian husband and you're the wife. Well, well ex explain why you put up with this shit. I mean, I've always just been Italian. Can't help it. <laughs> uh, they were... We were born on the same day, same year, yeah. same city. Our lives have like 10 huge, like parallel exact situations. And it, when I met him, it was it was like, wow, this is who is this person? Is this my family? And so I love God is deeply, but he's <laughs> I'm a, see the abuse of Italian and the wife's Peter. I mean, it's anybody's call. Yes, I think he is. I think he is. And and you guys, I remember years ago, you wrote a pilot uh, for a TV show that you gave to me. It was called The Ginger Twins, right? Yeah. Now, tell people about that. <laughs> you know, I had met him not too long before, and we were just hanging out at a thing, and he said, like, his birthday. I was like, wait, when, when's your birthday? And we figured out we had the same birthdays, same day, same year. And I, it, within a minute of hearing that, just the, the term ginger twins popped in my head. And then we actually, we labored around for a long time with different iterations and right. Like but my friend Justin ended up writing it with me. Um, and it was, I mean, it was, it was a great, it was a great little journey we did. Uh, there was a lot of reasons it didn't get made. And thankfully it didn't, it would have been instantly. Well, wasn't the premise that it was, 
two gingers, and every week, every episode, you had a different ginger celebrity do a cameo? Yeah, <laughs> right. We had, all, we had a long list of all these different gingies that could either be family members. We, would have, we were going to have a huge long. Who was on the list? Wanted my father to be Brendan Gleason. Yeah. It's been a while now. Put me on the spot. Um, who are some of the ones? Uh, Isla Fisher, maybe Amy Adams, some of the brothers. Uh, we were maybe get Louis C.K., Zach Galifianakis. Yeah. Oh, and uh, maybe Matt Walsh. He, he yeah. Was like a little bit. He was going to be in the fam. Um, yeah, there was a long list. Of, there's some good gingies out there. All right. So listen, what is your take on the Gubbins controversy? Should we or should we not bring him on Sunday papers? Oh, uh, he's all his shoulders. It's a feisty one. I don't know. I mean, you just maybe want to increase your insurance in the podcast before you let him on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> also, ask him about the, the charity. Yeah, What's the status of Gubbins I mean, fundraising sure for his own contribution? Yes. I think Dennis, he deserves a shot. Of course, Dennis deserves a shot. Ah, you're so afraid of him. You're so afraid to say, don't bring him on right now. Uh, now, what, can we also talk about this? We went to, you weren't there, but there was a celebrity golf tournament for the Com Comedy Kids Back, and Dennis magnanimously donated $1,000 to the charity in his name and then immediately started texting all of us to chip in on it. So it was actually all of us donating the money, but he gets all the credit. Did you? For us. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> and he's freaking out because he's only collected 400 so far and yeah. nobody's given him any money. Because we all gave that night. We all gave our own money that night. This is round two. Round two, dig deep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, listen, we got to run, but thanks for coming on and uh we'll see you at uh we'll see you at the Pizza Bake later today. No one tell oh, Dennis right. about this. No one tell Dennis. Yeah, nobody tell Dennis we did this. All right. All right, see you, brother. All right. That's going to really get in Dennis's craw. Oh my god, this is the best. We're we're not going to Can you hear me clearly? Yes. We are not going to let on. He listens to this and he probably fast forward to the Gubbin section every week. And this will kill him that we just had Mikey on. It's yeah, the best. Yeah. Also, we're probably getting some of the charity wrong, but I think what happened was he was all magnanimous. He had who knows how many substances in him and he's bidding along and another guy was bidding along and the other guy was like, and he and Den is like a thousand. The guy's like, okay, that's yours. He's like, wait, no, yo, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and wanted the guy to keep going. And then he was going to be like, hey, but wait, shouldn't you're willing to give 900. I'm willing to give 1,000. Why don't we go 500 each, buddy? Yeah, you know, win, yeah. win, win. And the guy was done. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's the best. Well, So now I've offered to be like, because I couldn't make it out to the tournament. So I was like, uh, you know, I'm like, all right, well, I'll, I'll give a, 100 or 200. And now I'm giving it to Gubbins. And then it's like, Come the end of the year, I'll be like, oh, here, part of my charitable donations. I gave 200 to Dennis Gubbins, but it's really for a charity. Yeah, that's not how it works. I'm like, oh, well, Dennis is a bigger charity than Comedy Gives Back. Oh, I think get... I think the U.S. government officially recognizes Dennis Gubbins as a charity at this point. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get to some entertainment. Okie dokies. Uh, Plakowski wrote in also what happened to both of your takes on the white Lotus two weeks ago, you bashed it. And then Mike even spoke about how it was brought together quickly, written very quickly. Uh, this week you both spoke so highly of it. Did you realize you had got you guys had a friend involved with the writing or production or something? So first of all, fuck you for accusing us of pandering to friends. We are hardcore entertainment journalists and we call it like we see it mm -hmm. i saw both seasons now i think we can talk about it we've both seen both seasons yeah. season one was better but season two was very very good i kind of not 
I think he might be confusing two things. Anyway, season one was like a first draft, and that 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 is true. It came together the production during COVID really quickly and all that. And I did like season one better. Season two, I we also talked about how you realized when you were about to press play on the final episode, they had a lot to wrap up and that was going to come together very quickly. So both of those things were said you know, it was a little weird. Uh, they, they really have to wine and dine her and get a guy to bring over all his cocaine and, and sleep with her. Like just kill her. Yeah. There's no reason to give her cocaine and have sex with her. Just put the a whole in her. boat ride back when the, she was separated from her assistant. Why couldn't you kill her then? Right. Right. Yeah. It's that was ridiculous. a whole. I'll tell you what, though. I got a major crush on that Italian actress, the one, the prostitute. Yeah. She was, she was a great actress. I heard she just got signed by a big agency here in the States. I think so. I think she so did. We're going to see what, more of her. We um, well, it's seeing more of her. There's only one, one area to see. And then the. Um, the actor, the guy that was a douchebag, who was like, uh, who invited his friend and uh, yeah. on the trip, he's Scottish or English. That actor, I think both of them, might both of those guys might be English. I'm, oh no, I'm shit! Not sure. Really? Wow. I think so. I'm we're British, yeah. I, I think I don't know. I lose track. It is, you know, when you talk about binging, there's certain shows that just check all the boxes, and. White Lotus is a perfect binge show. It's light, it's fun, it's got high stakes with cliffhangers at the end. Uh, it's got scenes that you'll talk about with your friends. It's it's a perfect little bingeable show. It's travel porn. It's travel porn, yeah. For sure. Apparently, the one in Italy was a Four Seasons. That that yeah. one with the pool jutting out on the rocks. And it used to be a monastery or a convent, I guess, technically. I think a convent. And then it was another hotel way back in the day. And then uh, I think the Four Seasons, I think I read they did a very good job restoring it. Wow. Yeah, they're going to get a lot of business. This production, now I don't know, I think I read the whole hotel. But I, anyway, they rented it out for two months. Damn. I know. I mean, think about that. A Four Seasons is $1,000 a night per room. There's probably 100 rooms in the hotel. Hopefully, hopefully the whole crew and cast stayed there. You have to think, think that way. You have to put them that, up anyway. That's that's $100,000 a night in room costs. Times. Yeah. So that's a million dollars a week just in room just in room costs. Um, Not that much. Phil McCracken. Making... Yeah. Phil McCracken. He wrote last episode, you mentioned not understanding the phrase. Uh, we already did that. Oh, no. We should say this. He didn't understand the phrase cutting off your nose despite your face. And he'd see, he had just mentioned that he watched Ban Banshees of Inna Sharon. And he said that movie is literally the central metaphor is cutting off your nose despite your face. Uh, kind of. What do you that mean? That movie was beautiful. exactly that. Well, really, wasn't he doing it as leverage against another guy? It was almost yeah, like... he was doing it to punish somebody else, but ultimately hurting himself. That's the that's what the phrase means. Right. If that's the interpretation of the phrase, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but right. but but I like the interpretation today, which is you're doing it to yourself and you're making it worse, not doing it to someone else. Right. Right. Uh, anyway, are we making America Florida again? Let's make America Florida. From Toby Lester. This is a good one. Florida man throws Christmas tree at wife. Oh, Richard, Richard Atchison. It's sweet. It's that time of the year. Richard At Atchison. Atchison lost his temper in the couple's Fruitland Park home Monday evening after he, his wife asked for help and put a spoon in the sink, accidentally splashing him with water. Oh, that's Atchison up. packed his things and went outside to his vehicle before returning home because, quote, he had been drinking and told his wife to leave instead. When the wife tried to go, deputies say Atchison shoved her, 
picked up a Christmas tree that was in the corner of the room and threw it at her, striking her. He then allegedly blocked the front door, preventing her from leaving, which he really didn't have to do because when she's all cut and tang caught and tangled up in that tree, she's not getting through a small trailer park door. <laughs> no way. And all the lights, she's tripping over the lights. Yeah, I know. And then they, and then in true Florida fashion, they have a couple of Pabst Blue Ribbons kick back on the plastic furniture in the front yard, start to get kind of flirty. And he's like, yeah. wow, those earrings are pretty. Where'd you get them? She's like, they're Christmas tree ornaments. You fuck. Why don't you uh, take off that tree and slip into something more comfortable? <laughs> like that old pumpkin smash. <laughs> Honey, I hate to say it, but I think you're getting some gray hairs. That's fucking tinsel from the tree, you asshole. <laughs> Your eyes are so beautiful when they blink like that. <laughs> <laughs> you look like an angel. <laughs> You're drying up a little. I'm going to pour water all over you. <laughs> Let me put this angel on top of your head. Yeah. Um. It it did remind me of the scene. Do you remember that? Oh God, that scene with Paulie and Rocky when he comes home and Rocky's over, but she's cooking. It's Thanksgiving. And oh, yeah, goes, of course. And she like wouldn't come out and then he goes in the kitchen he takes the turkey out of the oven and he goes over to the door and he throws it he's like you want the bird go in the alley and eat the bird i want you out of here get out live a life go out and have some fun yeah he threw her cooked thanksgiving turkey into the alley yeah right. and then rocky took her to the skating rink i mean night. god was that christmas or thanksgiving maybe i'm getting it wrong but anyway it was, it was a, it was a holiday turkey uh, let's read the other one. Okay. This is from uh, Brandon Brown. An off-duty Chicago police officer vacationing in Florida was arrested Monday after he was caught peeing in an ice machine oh, a bar God. in St. Petersburg. An arrest report says an employee at Jimmy B's Beach Bar was on their way to get ice from an ice machine when they found 30-year-old Henry Capuch pissing on the ice in the machine. When the worker told the 30-year-old off-duty officer to stop, Capuch began swearing and pushing the worker a couple of times with both of his hands. Then he arrest, uh, resisted arrest when the cops found him on the beach. And for all of this, I blame Florida. I think yeah. that's what happens when you get there. Yeah. When in Rome. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And I love that he, <clears throat> excuse me. I love that he, sh he shoved him with both hands, which means his dick, what his dick was just flopping around, which is, by That's the right. way, the greatest way. If somebody attacks you, pull your dick out because he's not going to, he's not going to wrestle you to the ground. He's going to keep a little distance. It's not very balls, disarming. Just your it's shaft. very disarming. It's disarming. Absolutely. Uh, hey, so Pooch. even Chicago became Florida this week. Hey, Capooch, what are you doing, man? I'm making yellow snow. Ah! It's Capooch being Capooch. What are you kidding? He's pulling a Capooch. Jimmy B's Beach Bar. More like Jimmy P's Beach Bar. <laughs> All right, let's do some sports. I love it. I love this one. It is a sad crinkling of the paper as I have to announce the updated <laughs> Tampa Bay bet. I am now down. I, I jacked the bet up by 100 bucks last week because I was down 250 I instantly said yes. And I'm thinking, okay, they're playing San Francisco. San Francisco is using their third string quarterback, a fucking rookie. A ringer. And uh, and they're getting a couple points. So I took San Francisco. So I so I said, all right, let's make it a hundred. They lost like thirty five to three. It was a fucking blowout. It was incredible. That kid could just march down the field whenever he wanted, dude. And then did you see him on Thursday Night Football play against? Uh, no. Uh, they they annihilated uh, Seattle on Thursday night. They were fucking. Mm -hmm. He's amazing. 
Wow. He's got poise. He's got wheels. He's got vision. He did this There's one a play. lot of exciting quarterbacks in the league. More, more than they're young. any time I've ever known, I think. They're young. They're rookies. They're in their yeah. second and third years. There's like a there's a big there's an era of new football coming of great new quarterbacks. I, I mean, clearly we lived through the era when it was Marino and uh what's his name in San Francisco? And then you had Trey Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman. Huh? You had yeah, yeah. Joe uh Joe Theisman. Oh, geez, I forgot about him. Yeah, uh, Joe Montana. Lawrence Taylor hasn't forgotten about him. Yeah. Yeah, Joe was... Montana. So, and no, and yeah, Marino and stuff. It, so, there was an incredible era, don't get me wrong, before that Bradshaw and everything. But John I, Elway. Think, I think now there's just so many exciting young ones. And I love athletic quarterbacks that can run. Yeah. Um. So, th- it just makes it, I think, so much more exciting. Yeah. Well, I'm not excited about this week. Uh, Tampa Bay is playing against Cincinnati. Tampa Bay is getting three and a half points, which is going to come nowhere near covering the 15 point loss that's about to befall them. So, are I'm you gonna... saying you don't want to go up 100 again? I'm saying I'd rather go to zero this week. Oh, no, there's no, that's not part of the agreement. It's 50 <laughs> bucks minimum. It's 50 bucks minimum, but also. Remember the year I paid you 400 and I yeah. double or nothing on the last. That's what I did. It was a 200. I'm remembering it now. And I doubled or nothing it on the nothing Super Bowl. Did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. All right. Really- so I'm playing with the house's money. All right. So 50 bucks this week. We're on. Um, And then uh, we have we had a story. This is kind of an interesting story. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm still a little phlegmy from last week. I hope I'm not grossing people out into my microphone. Oh, well, um, I have the worst voice ever. Shocking footage has emerged from an NHL-backed hockey tournament of a transgender... Now, try to follow this. A transgender female player hitting a much smaller transgender male opponent who suffered a concussion after hitting the boards head first. Danny, or Daniel... Makey, a transgender man from Minneapolis who plays for the Rainbow Dash, suffered the injury during the team trans ice hockey draft in Middleton, Wisconsin. Um, it's very easy to solve if you're not politi- – it's very easy to follow if you're not politically correct. I immediately labeled them in my mind. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say biologically, and it's very easy to follow. Yeah. It's just weird that a transgender female would take advantage of her size to hurt somebody who's also transgender but going in the opposite direction. Was she making a statement? Wait, there's something wrong about the last quote. Read the bottom paragraph. The contact doesn't look serious on video, but the size difference between players is so great that the female suffers a concussion. Twitter user Gene Mazix wrote, Twi- that, Gene Mazix, you just dead named. That's wrong. Yeah, she dead named. The male suffered a concussion. The, I guess the transgender male would be technically okay to say. It's so funny. This story is a minefield. And like, what can you even say about it? Of course, we can say whatever we want, but. Well, first of all, I can tell you that that was not a checking league. I guarantee you that that was not a game that had checking. And so it was way out of line. Figures a female couldn't keep that straight in her head and (laughs) smash that poor little guy. (laughs) (laughs) I used to, uh, when I was in college, I used to ref... um, for intramural Get hockey. Get off the ice, you crazy chick. Right. I used to ref the hockey games, and then I ref for uh, the women's varsity. I would ref. You know, remember John Matarazzo? Yeah. Yeah. So me and him would ref the the uh, the female games. And uh, one time, Boston College played BU, and the uh, the women's coach came on the ice 
and uh, and she tried to fight the other coach on the other bench, oh. and we had to physically break them up. It was fucking crazy. Wow, wow, that's that's a big responsibility. I mean, those are big schools. Yeah, D one. Oh no, it was club. It was club. Oh, okay, but still. Yeah. I was a shitty. All right, ref. what else? I was a terrible ref. Oh. Um, uh, here's let's go international. Yeah, you have to pay attention if you're, I mean, offsides and all that. Offsides, I could get, but there was other there was other penalties that uh, that I didn't always like. Two line back then, you weren't allowed to do a two line pass. Um, oh two, right, a two year old boy was partially swallowed alive by a hippopotamus. What is this? A game? Is this a, a Milton <laughs> brother Parker brothers game? Hungry, uh, hungry. He's he's recovering after a man stoned the animal to set the boy free. Uh, the attack took place in western Uganda. The boy, identified as Paul Iga, was playing near his home when he was grabbed by the amphibious animal, which then swallowed half the child's body. But he released it when he got hit with the rocks. Can I ask you a question about your pronunciation? Yeah. It clearly says Paul Iga. And because it's in Uganda, did you say Powell? Did I say Powell? Yeah. <laughs> I swear yes. to God, you did. Everyone I... heard it. You heard it, right, guys? Well, if you want to, you know, honor the Ugandan people, you have to say Powell. I think you might be right, but I didn't know if you somehow had gotten that information somewhere else. I don't know. I was on a roll. I was on a roll. Nice. I like it. I like it. So no corrections on uh, Powell. Powell on Mr. Ega. Ega. Yeah. Um, um, how does a hippopotamus half swallow? I mean, don't they ever see when they toss them a pumpkin or whatever, they like crush yeah. it and yeah, then yeah, throw yeah. it in the back of their throat. Right. Uh, the kid was all right, though. It's really fucking, it's a weird story. First of all, I think hippopotamuses are among the most dangerous animals in the world in they terms are. of the the sheer number. Uh, Denman, can you can you look that up for us? Are you still there? Uh, he it's he has below. A cro I think it's below crocodile. I forget. I saw the list recently. Of course, mosquitoes. I, no, I think it's more than crocodile. Is it more? Oh wow! I think there might be except more... crocodiles are all over the world. Kind of, and hippos are not. That's true, but I think that there's more snake deaths than any of them. But well, Den Denman's been quiet. Have you noticed Denman's been quiet today? He's pro hippo. He's yeah. also and he's also anti African kid. He's also anti. We know this. Here come the stats. Five hundred per year. Yeah, but in what? In what? Who's is it the most? So let's do snakes. He's going to look it up. Snakes, snakes. alligators. They just do the, dogs, there's a list. There's a dogs. list. Top five list, maybe. I would say dogs are up there. Oh, okay. well, rabies is a different, you know, kind of a different category. Snakes right. is probably, ooh, what about spiders? Oh, right. Mosquitoes is number one. I know that. Mosquitoes is number one. Always. They I deserve think, it. They work so hard. I think 100 million people a year die from uh, mosquitoes. Did you see that Jimmy Carr joke about mosquitoes? What is it? That if the world could come together and fund charities that make uh, mosquito nets and we could send them to Africa... We'd save millions of mosquitoes from getting AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> I slaughtered it probably a little, but that's the chest. Yeah. Denman, what the fuck is taking so long? He'll get it. It's coming. It's coming. It's funny when, you know, I went to Australia in the 80s uh, or 1990 
And my one reaction was like, I'd go out hiking. I was down there visiting Brickner, right? And you'd go in the ocean and, and there was a very much awareness of great whites right in the vicinity. And then you'd go hiking and they'd have a long list. And I'm like, God, you guys really haven't killed everything that can kill you. That's what we did in America. Yeah. Right. Bear mountain has no more bears. Yeah. Now, and I think it's, I think there, it's were why no more, the, there were no more wolves in, in Wyoming at that time. They've come back. They brought them back. I think that's why Australians are so in the moment. I think that we we should re-release killer animals in every city of the country because it keeps you from getting – you're not going to stare at your phone when a fucking grizzly might come jumping out of a dumpster. All right, Denman sent us a link. Um, he so sent I us the on headline. He sent us the fucking headline. Oh, yeah, it's a link. All right, I opened it up. So here's the top. Here, okay. So number 15 is sharks. According you're, to this list. Oh, you're freezing I got, up. I, can you hear me? Yeah, you're freezing According up. According to this so list, me, which is Nico. Oh, go ahead. You, you, you read it. I'll do it. You're freezing. Uh, sharks. Six deaths a year in the world for all the fear of sharks wolves 10 deaths a year lions 22 deaths a year elephants 500 deaths a year hippopotamuses also 500 deaths a year although they kill a lot of watermelons <laughs> tapeworms 700 deaths a year crocodiles a thousand deaths a year damn uh, roundworms, 4,500 deaths a year. Tsetse flies, 10,000 deaths a year. What? Assassin bugs, 12,000 deaths a year. That's called a kissing bug. Uh, freshwater snails, 20,000 deaths a year. Whoa. Dogs, 35,000 deaths a year. Damn. And they, you're right. It's because of rabies. Snakes. 100,000 deaths a year. God damn it. Humans coming in at number two, 437,000 deaths a year. Well, I think that number's higher if you count suicides. And mosquitoes, 750,000 deaths a year. That's, I think, what I said earlier. Wow. Or maybe I said 100 million. All right. We'll get a correction. There you All go. Right, how bad is my connection? It's better now. Well, <laughs> let's let's plow through this, but a big apology. Uh, clearly, my power has not come back on. So this is going through a very weak signal on my iPhone. And the only reason a light is still on on the Zoom is because my bat, my uh, laptop was charged. That's it. All right. Oh, that's good it. news. Yep. Um, all right, let's get to Good let's news, just skip, Gibbons. Let's just skip down to letters to the editor. Yep. As always, reach out to us, fitzdogradio at gmail.com. We'd be happy <clears> to get back to you. Uh regarding your this is from Phil. Regarding your two minute World Cup goal delay. Uh, oh, I remember I was my I was my yeah. sister was texting me and she was like two minutes ahead. Uh she goes, it has not he goes, it has nothing to do with geography. If you're watching on a streaming service like YouTube TV, which I was, there's a one to two minute delay minimum. It's an internet thing. If you're listening on radio or watching over the air antenna, there's almost zero delay. Okay. Well, if you get a frantic call from me on Sunday asking to cancel the bet on Tampa Bay, it's because I'm listening to it on radio <laughs> and I'm a minute or two ahead of you. So, uh, I should forget I said that. You may get a frantic call from me on Sunday saying, let's double the bet or let's kill the bet. Uh, Douglas Hoffman Esquire. He loves to put that at the end of his name. Yes. The only one I can remember, uh, we we're talking about um, the the, the uh, Dick Capri, the comedian Dick Capri. Yeah. The only one I can remember is from a roast uh, of longer ago where Dick said, quote, I leave a tampon on top of my TV to remind me of the cunts who took the VCR in the divorce. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. That's great. Oh, my God. 
Uh, yeah, they, I'm going legal, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna legally change my last name. So there's a comma space ESQ. Could I do yeah. that? Yeah. Why not? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, those comedians, Dick Capri, and we just, we just, uh, we lost Freddie Roman recently. Those guys had to be squeaky clean when they worked in the Catskill Mountains. But then when they were among each other at roasts and stuff, they were filthy and dark. So funny. Oh, yeah. They're trying to make the funniest people in the world laugh. Are you kidding yeah. me? Right. Yeah. Um, oh, I gave this guy a new verbal tick. Scott G, you want to read this? My wife recently noticed that I've started a new verbal tick by saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just try to say it like I say it, but it didn't feel familiar. And uh, she says he says it way too often. I never used to say it, but listening to this week's Sunday papers, I realized that Mike says it all the time. Did Mike do this to me? Is it some sort of dark magic? How can I stop grateful for any advice? P.S. Please tell Mike Deconstructing Harry is now on Amazon Prime. Uh, oh, freebie, meaning it has commercials. Two things regarding Deconstructing Harry. It, it's also on Apple. I didn't realize because I went in and tried to find it at one point. Maybe it's back or maybe I missed it entirely. But oh my God, this past week I also watched uh, Zelig. It's a joke machine. And anyway, if you haven't seen Deconstructing Harry, just do it for the Kirstie Alley uh, alone because she almost yes. the show. The and the show. by the way, super famous scene with Robin Williams who's defocused that's all i'm going to say like he's on a he's on a movie set and they they have trouble focusing on him i'll just leave it there there is such absurd humor in in the, it's 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 classic so i didn't know i said yeah 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 that much but it's very positive why you say it? here's what you say you say yeah 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 and you also say yeah no you say yeah no a lot yeah no is my favorite yeah right so Scott G, man, don't fight it. Just, and you just also say you. this a lot. Whoa, 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 whoa. You didn't hear about blah, blah, blah? Whoa, 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 whoa. It sounds good coming out of your mouth. It must sound amazing coming out of my <laughs> damaged voice. I'm listening. When you say that, I am listening. <laughs> all right, let's get to. And that's all, folks. Ah, uh, the obituary is very disturbing this week. We will yeah, yeah, yeah. preface this by saying if you have suicidal thoughts, if you're thinking about suicide, uh, there are resources out there. Call somebody and get help. Also, I'm not making light of this, but if you are thinking of working for Ellen, there's also resources, and I'm sure there are a number. Call us, write to us, we'll talk you down. Steven Twitch Boss was a dancer and TV personality who was best known as the DJ for the Ellen DeGeneres show. Have a little fun today. If oh. someone, I uh, already said that. This is uh, heartbreaking. Steven Twitch Boss studied dance in college, and in 2003, he was a runner up on the television tel show Star Search. He choreographed for K pop singer Seven and was a background dancer in the film Blades of Glory. In 2008, he was runner-up on the dance competition So You Think You Can Dance and came back to be a judge on the show this year. He was best known for being the DJ on the popular Ellen DeGeneres show. He married Allison Holker, a dancer who also competed on So You Think You Can Dance. He is survived by his wife and three children. So I don't know if you saw, I saw a couple of the uh, Ellen staff uh, not the higher ups uh, post that this is like, he, he was a really great guy <clears throat> and uh, it seems it. So I'm kind of bummed about this because he seemed like he had so much going for him and he seemed, I mean, that's the deceiving thing. He seemed happy. Yeah, I don't he know. Had a, he, I had don't a bunch know. Of, he had a bunch of career things that were going on. He had a $4 million house, three young kids and, uh, Good looking guy, positive energy, had a lot of famous friends. Um, my guess is that in a lot of these cases, somebody is on antidepressants and they go off them without tapering properly. If you take antidepressants, do not fuck around with them. They will really fuck your brain up if you don't go off them very slowly. So talk to your doctor 
and uh, and manage your medications properly, or else you can be really left with like you know sometimes you just the 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 the, the cortisone or whatever that whatever the stuff that makes you feel good that uh, that that these pills release suddenly it's gone and your body has stopped generating it itself and you're left with no good feelings at all serotonin and and all that stuff so uh be careful also i mean i i I really don't know what i'm talking about i should definitely preface by saying that but it's also it could have been uh depression without meds and he was trying to fight it as best he could naturally and there's no shame in meds right okay let's cheer up mike let's let's have fun today Uh, the Lockhorns are out to dinner, which isn't that often, but they do like to go to nice restaurants <laughs> once in a while. They are romantic. And, uh, <laughs> a good Le- one. Leroy's sitting there and he says to the waiter, what do you recommend to help forget this night ever happened? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. And the next one, uh, Loretta is looking at a photo album with her friend and she goes, these are from Leroy's bachelor party. That's why all the faces are pixelated. <laughs> just hookers and strippers. Just joke, 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 joke. And now the two of them are at the marriage counselor, and they're each wearing bicycle helmets and padding <laughs> on their elbows and knees. And he goes, I'm afraid you two aren't coming into these trust falls with the right attitude. <laughs> they're uh, emotionally guarded as well. Hagger the Horrible, the Viking, he comes into a house. There's a man about to carve a ham, and the wife opens the door, and she looks a little disturbed, and she goes, we have a visitor. And the man says, hello, Hagger. Goodbye, ham. Hello, rape. He doesn't say that, but that's the third frame. Hagger. I, th- uh, I think his wife's name might be Ham. Hello, <laughs> Goodbye, Ham. <laughs> Goodbye, my virtuous ham. <laughs> Maybe he meant Pam. <laughs> okay, here is uh, Far Side. It's one of my favorite of all time, oh, which I'm gonna great. say, I'm gonna say that about a lot of them. This is a picture of a school building, a brick school building with a door, and a kid has gone up the stairs and he has a book in his hand, and he is leaning against this door and pushing it with all his might and there's a sign under that says midvale school for the gifted and this kid is pushing it and right above his hand on the door is a big sign that says pull (laughs) (laughs) not a small sign not a little plaque a giant pull sign right where his eyes would have been and his (laughs) hand is an inch under it and he's pushing with the biggest hardest lean his body can make and what Uh, gets me about this especially and maybe this is very un-pc to say the the way he's drawn the kid and the way like he's just looking down like it's the perfect this kid is clearly on the spectrum yeah and he is He's probably wildly gifted, and that's why he's in this school, but he's on the spectrum. And I just love when Larson would take these, like last week or two weeks ago we did, I think it was last week, the alien that tripped down the stairs, all these things that we're saying, they're so smart and intimidating, and then he shows them doing stupid things. Yeah. But but this one is especially great because so many of these highly intelligent people um, can have these real gaps in uh, in common sense smarts. Anyway, I love this one. Uh, bringing it home with my girl. Oh my God, does Blondie look good today? Mm. She answers the front door for Dick Face, and she's got on a pea green mini skirt. Uh, it's not mini, but it's above her knees, which allows you to see the calf definition, which she's so famous for. She's oh, yeah. got on a uh, a pink sweater, and her breasts look enormous. Well, the pink sweater has stripes right across the chest. Yes, horizontally, They're... and as we know, horizontal stripes are not slimming. No, no, they really they 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 lift and they present. And she says to him, "How is your day, sweetheart?" And he goes, 
Well, it started out pretty bad. She leans in, puts her arms around him, leans him back, and it says smack, and with hearts, and she gives him a big kiss on the face. And then he goes, then smack, it turned out pretty good. And I just want to say, why, why can't that be me? Why can't that woman see that I had a rough day and with that fucking sweater on, because what's next? That well, You don't see the next frame. I mean, you do with Dagwood. It's in the kitchen. My next frame yeah. is up those stairs to the left on that king size <laughs> bed. And that sweater and, is crumpled on the ground. At least he had the proper reaction this week. You have to be a little proud of him. Yes. Now that's true. Because normally it would be like smack. It's like I had more, I more in mind had dinner, you know, or some bullshit comment. Yeah. Even the dog looks impressed. Yeah, the dog is like, all right, Dagwood, you're not a homosexual this week. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. There we go. There we go. All right. They got a homos- uh, speaking of homosexuals, <laughs> thanks to Midcoast Media for doing a great show this week. Uh, producing, right. editing, fixing up what garbled audio we're going to get from Mike's closet with no electricity. I apologize to everybody. My voice is bad enough, and now you're not even getting the good mic. And I'm sitting, it's crazy. I don't know I can't what's believe going on. The power is still out. That's crazy. It tried to come back on, and I wonder if the building or my unit blew like the main fuse. I'm going to, I have to go check all this stuff. Mm. I can't believe when I came back, the Zoom, all I did was, uh, what did I do? Oh, my computer, the Zoom died because no internet. And then I, did the hot link on my phone, which had one or two cells, depending. So now I've put it out in the room where it has two cells. I know this is fascinating. And then you pop back up. I couldn't believe the Zoom came back to life. Unbelievable. In, we did in it. Progress. It always works. Somehow it always works from different cities, from different computers, different Wi-Fis. We come to you. And uh, it's almost the end of the year. We're, we're going to do a Christmas show next week. And then we will be off. For New Year's Eve, we're going to take a week off. So uh, we'll see you guys next week. And uh, When does the NFL season end? Late January. Well, that's playoffs, right? Because uh, Yeah, that's February playoffs. Oh, the regular season? The yeah, maybe the regular season ends at the end of December. When do our bets go till? That's what I'm asking, oh. sir. Well, I don't think that the Buccaneers are making it to the postseason. Aren't they like in second place? Anyway, whatever, with a losing. No, record. they're not even 500 right now. No, I know, but that doesn't stop some teams from making the playoffs. All right, whatever. I just want to win money. All right. Uh, this is where we say take it each, I think. Uh, I think we're going to say take it each. I'll see you at Dennis's in about a half an hour. Uh, let's see if I get my power back on to do my hair. Yeah. Okay, kids. Take it each. Take it each. Yes, the sun. Sunday papers, all you need, the Sunday papers.